for 25 years. Your home for Minnesota Twins baseball. Twins of the White Sox resume their four-game series at Target Field. Everybody talking about the pitching matchup here tonight as the White Sox send their ace Chris Sale against the Minnesota rookie Andrew Albers. We'll have much more on that matchup in just a moment. Welcome to Target Field with Ron Coomer. I'm Anthony LaPantis. Minnesota continued their home run streak last night. They've now hit a home run in nine consecutive games. Last night it was Joe Maurer doing the honors, continuing a recent power surge for the Minnesota catcher. Well, Joe has, and he's been swinging the bat very well, but he's been able to drive the ball out of the ballpark. To me, the last six games, you look at this, three home runs, some doubles, a bunch of RBIs, but it's the home run ball that has been different. You're going to see the normal swing of Joe Maurer. This is a fastball down. He catches it a little out in front, but this ball goes the other way in a long way. The thing that's been a little different as of late is Joe's pulled some balls a little bit more, and you look at the extension out front where you see the contact point, Anthony, way out in front of his front foot. That's where most power hitters want to hit the ball. Joe has been accustomed to letting the ball get deep. But as of late, he's been getting ahead of the bat out there. Because of that, you've seen more balls in the seats. Interesting matchup for Maurer tonight. Four for 14 in his career against the White Sox ace, Chris Sale. We'll have much more on this pitching matchup next. Sale for the Sox. Elvers for the Twins. Dick Kramer and Burt Weilevin are next. North is presented by Northland Ford. Visit NorthlandFord.com and your local Northland Ford dealer today. By Menards. Save big money on all your home improvement needs at Menards. And by the new smooth and distinctive Budweiser Black Crown. It's another gorgeous night for baseball at Target Field. The Twins are hoping to win this series and finish 
the homestand with a winning record. Dick and Burt with you for game three between the Twins and the White Sox. We think we've got an interesting pitching matchup because we have two left-handers who could not be more different in how they get hitters out. You know what? Sometimes baseball needs those one nothing, 2-1 ball games, and you hope that's one of them here tonight because for the Twins, it's Andrew Elvers. My goodness, has he been red hot in his first two major league starts. Control. That's all he's about. Chris Herman catching him for the third time. It seems where he sits, the ball is in that area. A lot of ground ball outs, very good defensive plays behind him because he attacks the strike zone. Not a lot of strikeouts, but he puts the ball in play, and that's the main thing for Elvers. And his mountain opponent tonight, one of the best left-handers in the game, an all-star, Chris Sale. Twins have faced him plenty of times before, and he's he's a tough character to try to get hits against. Yeah, two different type of left-handers. Albers more of a control type pitcher. Chris Sale, he's a strikeout pitcher. Over his last two starts, one against the Yankees, and then the Tigers in his last start, a complete game victory. 2-0, 1.10 ERA, making his fifth career start against the Twins. Twins beat him here earlier this year. Brian Dozier had a big three-run home run in that ball game. The Twins have mastered the Chicago White Sox this year, winning 10 of the 14 games. They're hoping to pick up a win here tonight on a gorgeous night here at Target Field. Chris Sale against Andrew Albert. The Northern Import with independent league ties has been the feel-good story of the season. He's been getting it done with pinpoint control and pitching smarts that defy his rookie status. Can Andrew Albers continue his scoreless start? Find out next on Fox Sports North. And Andrew Albers, the best story on the mound for the Twins in the 2013 season, will make just his third start. But I think a lot of people walked up to the ballpark today, bought a ticket to see this young man pitch because he has yet to give up a run in the big leagues. A near shutout in his debut and a complete game shutout in his second start. Yeah, and in Kansas City, he won seven to nothing. And then his last start, a two hit shutout. Beating the Cleveland Indians two, excuse me, three to nothing on two hits. Right, the pitcher and the White Sox will get their first look at Andrew Albers. The Menard batting order: Alejandro De Aza leading off, Gordon Beckham batting second, Alexei Ramirez third, Paul Canerco, Adam Dunn, Abasail Garcia, Jeff Kepinger, Diane Viciedo, and Josh Fegley. 
Yeah, Elmer's 27 years old out of uh, Saskatchewan, Canada. Now, he's not a young chicken. He's 27 years old. So he has had to battle. He went battle to Tommy John surgery, went to independent ball, and uh, made it back to the big league, signed with the Twins in spring training a couple years ago. Went through a couple years of, through their system, get the call up, and he's making the most out of it. Northland for defense, and they have played very well behind Albers in his two starts. Josh Willingham in left, Clay Thomas in center, Wilkin Ramirez in right field. Trevor Blue, Pedro Floromone, left side of the infield. Brian Dozier, Joe Mauer, the right side. And, of course, Chris Herman behind the play. Justin Morno not in the lineup as the designated hitter or as the first baseman getting the night off. Herman deserves some of the credit, does he not, for oh. Albert's performance in his first two starts? Well, as, you know, pitcher-catcher relationship, you're one. You're one on the day you pitch. You work together as a group. And we'll see a lot of those. Yep. First pitch strikes. And that's what he did. Every time he threw a ball, one, he'd come back with a strike. Just around the strike zone, changing speeds, adding and subtracting. Now some looper to left and a base hit. Odeaza starts the ball game as he did last night with a leadoff single. Left the ball up a little bit right there. And you know, the Chicago White Sox have a scouting report. They look at it. And say, you know what, this young man right here, he's around the plate, so be ready to swing. He leaves a pitch up, take advantage of it. We've seen first the Royals and the Indians do that the second time through the order, getting a look at Albers, and then in the middle innings of his two starts, he's had some very quick innings, seven, eight pitches. We'll see if that plays out again here tonight. He's had one double play turn behind him. Good Ball block one. right there by Herman. Yeah, Albers in his first two starts through. A total of 211 pitches combined in those first two starts, and about 70% were strikes. And that's why the defense likes to play behind him because he does. He works pretty quick, and he throws strikes. Missing low again, 2-0. Albers, in case you haven't seen him before, throws all of his pitches from the stretch position. Diaz at first base, 15 stolen bases. There's yet to be a stolen base attempt yet against Elbers, but there haven't been that many base runners. There's a strike. Anthony's two and one. Similarly, he's only induced one ground ball double play, but that's because there haven't been many base runners. All right. He looks like a guy who will be able to do a lot of that as his hopefully long major league career progresses because he gets a lot of ground ball outs. And here's a chopper. Floramone is going to have to hurry. The flip to first, one away, and on the play, Diaz advances to second. Just in Monday's start alone, a highlight reel full of defensive play. Yeah, Dozier going into short right field, making a nice running catch. Floramone up the middle. Remember the one he threw from his knees right there? And then Thomas coming in quickly and making a speed of going out. And making a nice catch. He also, it was Arcia that came in, made a nice catch out in the right field. Alexei Ramirez with a runner in scoring position. Another thing that hasn't happened in uh, Albert's starts. Runner at second, one down. Pitch is up. Ball one. Ramirez has played in every game the Chicago White Sox have played so far this year. This is their 122nd game. Hitting 339 this year against Twins pitching, 314 in his career. In his complete game shutout against the Indians, not only did Cleveland not score a run, they didn't get a runner to third base, they did not get a runner to second base. And now Diazza is there with one out. And Albers, Albers falls behind 2 0. Popped up, short center. Thomas got a very late break on the ball, and Floramone can't make the play. Blinded by the sun, nobody at second base. The throw comes to home. You know, just before he threw that pitch, I'm looking out in center field. We got a great view here of Thomas shielding his eyes. And when that ball was hit, Thomas did not move. He did not pick up the ball right away. It got into that. Twilight sun right there, the brightness of that sun. 
And watch Thomas's reaction right here on top. You see him not even moving. He has no idea where that ball is. By the time he could pick it up, the only one that had a chance was Florimon going out to center field. So kind of a gift a double right there for Ramirez. And now Canerco. Can't catch what you can't see. We said that a number of times in the Metrodome. <laughs> and the ball hit right up into the sun into center field. So White Sox with a threat here in the very first inning. Second and third, one away. And again, Albers falls behind. It's the first time that Albers has thrown a pitch with a runner at third base. Yeah, infield playing back there will give up a run for an out right here. One and oh to Canerco. Bouncer to short. And Floramone will throw to first. And Andrew Albers is no longer perfect. He has an earned run average. Well, Canerco picking up his 42nd RBI. Again, kind of a gift RBI right there, but the White Sox do take a one nothing lead. Look at Floramone right here. He knows that Thomas can't see it. He has to run out there and kind of fell hard on that uh, left shoulder. And the last throw looked good. I mean, that's with his right arm, but he had plenty of time to throw out Canerco, which, which he kind of took a little extra time to do. Adam Dunn, the hitter. And he's fallen behind every hitter except the first hitter. 1-0. Albers now has an ERA of 0 0.50. 2 and 0. 13 pitches and only six strikes. We also want to find out what that home plate umpire, that being Todd Tishner, what he will give you. Will he give you the low strike? A couple pitches down that weren't called, but they might be on the low side. Three and zero. Oh. One walk in his first two starts. There's Todd Tishner, C.B. Butner, Corey Blazer, and Bill Miller on the bases. Well, you have first base open. I know it's the first inning, but this guy will have the green light. And she swung and hit a ground ball to Earl uh, Boston right there, the first base coach. Three and one now to Dunn. Saeel Garcia batting sack uh, batting next if given a chance here in the first. Yeah, done fourth in the American League in home runs with 28. Chris Davis leading with 44. On the outside corner, a full count. Third strike. Albers comes back to strike out Dunn. A sun aided run, but a run nonetheless.
Hawks winning 10 of the 14 games. Hoping for a comeback win here in tonight's game. one nothing White Sox. Here's the Menards batting order for the Twins. Brian Dozier, Joe Maurer, Josh Willingham, Ryan Domit, Wilkin Ramirez, Trevor Plouffe, Chris Herman, Cleet Thomas, and Pedro Florimone. And Brian Dozier has had some success against Sale, and he talked about his keys to success. For a right-handed approach, you got to be kind of aggressive because you don't want to fall behind, and then he throws a slider, which is kind of like we say, the invisible slider. That is tough to pick up. So uh, be aggressive, aggressive to the fastball, and that's uh, you might a uh, better chance of having this success. So. Now he's had just two hits against Sale in six at bats, but they've both gone over the fence. Yeah, he's the only uh, twin guy, twin in uniform that has hit a home run against uh, Chris Sale. And Chris Sale with a good fastball. Making his 23rd start, his second against the Twins. He actually lost to the Twins here back here on June 19th to Kevin Correa, seven to four. Sale threw a lot of pitches in a short amount of time in that ball game, 101 in five innings. And one of the ones he threw to Dozier was uh, hit over the fence with two men aboard, a big three-run home run for Dozier. Yeah, that coming in the second inning off the of Sale. You saw those numbers. Now the eight and 11. That you know after winning 17 ball games last year. Uh, he actually told me in my interview the other day with him uh, that he's learned more this year than he did last year. Got a lot of run support last year. Has not had to really receive that much this year. But uh, he said this is going to make me a better pitcher as, as I mature. So you went through stages like that in your career where you went through long periods of time without much run support. Yeah it, it makes you a better pitcher. It really does because you realize you cannot make one mistake. It could cost your ball game. There's that big sweeping breaking ball that Dozier was talking about. That's nasty down and in. Sale has averaged over a strikeout an inning. Like I said, not maybe the numbers. Take a look at the pitch right here. Maybe the wins are not there, but he's fifth in the American League in ERA. Four complete games. That's the most in the American League. And he's fifth in strikeouts. Joe Maurer, the batter. Maurer's average has climbed during this homestand up to 324, and he takes strike one. And what Sale has given the White Sox is consistency. 18 of his 22 starts have been quality starts. Six innings, three earned runs or less. Breaking ball down and away, one and one. Yeah, Mauer four hits and 14 at bats against Sale. Well, there's the run support or lack of uh, in the American League, and Chris Sale on top. Jack swing called strike one and two he throws three quarter and I, you know everybody refers to him like a young Randy Johnson because of the arm angle that he generates and comes at the hitter especially that big breaking ball he'll start that right at left handed hitters who are lefties hitting only 142 against him that looked to be a change up inside Maurer swings and misses let's take a look you see the angle that he comes at you with. And he has that circle changeup that uh, he showed us in the uh, pregame on how he holds it. Josh Willingham, a couple of hits, 14 at bats, but eight strikeouts against Chris Sale. Tapper in front of the third baseman, Kappinger. He fouled it off his foot, apparently, one strike. Northland for defense for the White Sox. The tank in left, Diane Viciedo, Diaza in center, Avasail Garcia in right, Kempinger, Ramirez, Beckham, Canerco, and Fegley around the mound. Yeah, if you're in the Twins lineup and you're a left-handed hitter, you say, come on, righties, get this guy out of the ball game as quick as possible because right-handers are hitting 243. Left-handers only 142. He's given up 14 home runs, all of them the right-handed hitters. In his career, he's only given up three home runs to left-handed hitters. Two to Brendan Bosch, one to Travis Hafner. That's it. And you'll see a lot of that. We saw Dozier do it. We've seen Willingham do it. You check your swing, but it's too late because you have to start your swing early because of both good velocity and great deception. Yeah, Ron Coomer was talking about in the in the pregame about that, how quick you have to be with the barrel of the bat. You have to get it out front. 
three strikeouts and he cuts through the Twins one two three in the bottom of the first. as we head to the second inning. Andrew Albers is back on the mound today for the Twins, and that means Chris Herman is catching him because why change what's been working so well? I talked to Chris before the game about catching Albers, and he said he continues to be impressed with how calm and poised Albers is before each and every start. Herman says it really makes him all the more confident as his battery mate. He says it's a lot of fun working with him, plus they have all that experience from catching together in AAA, and so we'll see what they can have working in this third start together. Yeah, thank you, Jamie. You know, there are there's chemistry and and sometimes it's the chemistry between the pitcher and the catcher. And you know, you just have confidence that every time Herman puts a sign down, Elvers maybe doesn't want to shake off because they just work together. They talk between innings, they they look at the lineup, they do the best they can with what the stuff that that uh, Elvers has tonight and Herman will decide, you know, how far and where to go with it. And right there, you see that. We showed you, you know, just at the beginning of the show, the control that Elbers has. Herman sat inside, and will home plate umpire give me that pitch inside? And Kishner did. Look at Herman sitting inside right here. And where's the pitch? Right there. That might be an inch or two off the plate. Who knows? Only Fox Tracks knows, but that's strike three, second strikeout. Jeff Kempinger. The batter. Both strikeouts have been called third strikes. Done to end the first. And now Garcia to start the second. And strike one. A lot of lefties in a game of baseball in baseball history that didn't overpower hitters, but boy, they can have control like a Tom Glavin or, or a Jamie Moyer or Jimmy Key, those type guys. And you hit your spot. That was a pretty good pitch right there. Not called a strike. You know, we've seen him twice, been impressed twice. And so in between starts you think about Albers and who he reminds you of and who's in twins history he's similar to here's a little looper in the left for a base hit. So a couple of looping liners for hits and a lost ball in the sun so far. And I thought of a name I probably should have thought of it sometime between the Kansas City and Chicago start but a teammate of yours Alan Anderson. Yeah. Yeah. In terms of stuff I mean. Alan Anderson ended up winning an ERA title, but I don't know that he they didn't have radar readings back then. He might not have touched 90 miles per hour. Same type of guy, wasn't yeah, he? Exactly, exactly. And a reliever we had, Tom Bergmeier, was that way. He had a long career hitting his spots and keeping the ball down. Bergy more of a reliever, but Alan Anderson did have a couple good years for the Twins. Great changeup. Uh, for a while, the Twins had both. Frank Viola and Alan Anderson, left handers with great changeups. Mm -hmm. 1 0 to Diane Viciedo. And 2 0. Oh. 
six hits in two starts covering 17 and a third innings and three early hits for the White Sox here in start number three. It's all about making good quality pitches. Kep Kepinger got a pitch up and to hit that base base hit into left center. He's at first base. Does not have a stolen base in one attempt. Now up again, three and zero. Oh. Twenty-six pitches, fourteen strikes. Bentley on deck. We saw Adam Dunn swinging three and oh this guy right here BC Adel and also the tank has I'm sure the green light right here. If it's a pitch to his liking. Yeah. <laughs> and he's trying to hit that into the fourth deck here and there's only three. <laughs> you see Adel and Alexei Ramirez talking with fellow Cuban Tony Oliva before the game today. You know, after that swing you kind of see the, his face almost like they kind of did something with that thumb. He's been bothered with a sore left thumb. Back to Albert. Fires to second. Double play. 11 pitches in a scoreless second inning. It's 1 0 Chicago. It's Lormon or Dozier. Watch his ground ball right back to Elbers right here. He knows exactly that Lormon is covering Coleman. A nice chest high throw and then let the shortstop finish it off. Lormon well, hopes to hit here in the second inning, but Sale struck out the side in the first. He'll face Domit, Ramirez, and Plouffe for sure. Domit, the designated hitter. Way out in front, strike one. You describe Sale as throwing three quarter, but in reality, it's a low three quarter, isn't it? Yeah, it's almost sidearm, yeah. but uh, you know he's he's not down underneath. He's kind of like at your waist and you know up a little bit, only because of his delivery, because he opens up so so quickly. He says sometimes he falls off to the side. He's Trying to improve that, but uh, got a great arm. Pop down the right field line and a foul ball into the seats. It's not what you would teach out of a textbook in terms of pitching mechanics, is it? No, I mean, uh, you know, you can see six foot six, about 180 pounds, just kind of that whip that he generates. Really believes on the foundation of his leg strength, pushing off that pitching rubber and then exploding toward home plate. Driven to deep right center field. Garcia glides to the warning track to make the catch. One away. 
ball had some carry to it. One down. I had a chance to sit down with Chris Sale and talk to him about the importance of his foundation as leg strength. Sitting back on my back leg and kind of driving towards the plate. Um, I like to kind of finish almost sometimes I fall off to the side and I know that I, I need to correct myself. But for me anyways, pitching, you want all your momentum going towards the glove. You don't, it's, it's kind of like when a coach tells you, you don't want to throw it to the glove, you want to throw it through the glove. And you want all your energy going this way. Did you write the script for him? Uh, I know, you know there's <laughs> things that I have said, you know, before, and when he says that, and then when he was talking about his distance running, the importance of running distance for that foundation, I, I had to give him a high five because it sounded like a young me because, you know, his dad, Alan, built him a mound in the backyard, and that's exactly what my pops did. You know, when, he, when they couldn't be there to catch you, there's this, take a look at the drive right there off of that pitching rubber, and then you can see the leg, how you can push off right there. That's one thing I hope that uh, Kyle Gibson is watching as far as that push off. When Gibson pitches, I say sometimes he doesn't utilize that lower part, the, the calf area and, the, and your foot to really push off and drive. One and two, Ramirez strikes out, two down. And it just makes you look more aggressive. That's a great changeup right there, but what makes that so good is his aggressiveness toward the plate. Albers has that too, but in a slower form of, as far as velocity. Great location of that changeup, and he picks up his fourth strikeout. Trevor Bluth, the batter. Toward the hole, backhanded by Ramirez. And on nine pitches, Sale cuts through the Twins in the second inning. You think will be the Arby's value player of the game. Text the word value followed by a space and the player's name to short code 234234. A chance to talk with Andrew a little bit between starts two and three and just wanted to make sure. And he said, yes, the proper way to pronounce his last name is Albers. Like uh, Al, the first name. So Andrew Albers gave up his first run in the first inning and it took a Sun aided fly ball to center field to allow the White Sox to get that run. Josh Fegley, Alejandro de Aza, and Gordon Beckham in the third for Chicago. Ball one. Yeah, I haven't really seen Tyler, Tyler Flowers yet in this uh, third game of this uh, four game series. Fegley getting uh, the first three starts, a guy that I'm sure they're going to want to look at as the uh, season winds down a little bit more. Begley in his rookie season. He was the White Sox number one pick in 2009. There's Flowers. Getting called up from AAA where he's hitting over 300. 2 0 oh to Fegley. We have not seen the precision from Albers this year. 
or in this start tonight that we saw in the first two starts. He's fallen behind hitters. In fact, he's thrown 16 strikes and 15 balls. Well, you'd like to have everything going for you like you did the first two starts, but then sometimes you go out there and it's just not there. So now he's got to try to find it, get back in that strike zone. That's making the adjustment. Find a way to stay competitive even though you don't have your pinpoint control. Mm -hmm. Three and one. And a liner to left, a base hit. Fourth Chicago hit. Backhanded by Willingham, and Fegley holds up with a leadoff single. That'll bring up Deaza. You can ask a question online at carsoup.com slash baseball. Daniel in Austin, Minnesota. Wondering whether the Dodgers are now the team to beat in October. Unbelievable but this, the way the Dodgers have kind of turned their season around. Last 49 ball games, 41 and 8. You can see they're doing it on the road too. Unbelievable uh, job by you know everybody. Are they the team to beat? I'd have to say yes. I mean, you know, you have Atlanta, you have Pittsburgh that's on a great roll. It should be a nice uh, postseason. St. Louis Cardinals are, are pro will probably get there. Maybe Cincinnati. I just, you know, here we are in the middle of August, and it's interesting uh, to discuss these things. But I guess what I figured out is, you know, it really doesn't matter. You get the eight teams that get into the tournament, and whichever one is the healthiest, playing the good at the t uh, their, the best baseball at the time, really doesn't matter. You know how they're doing or how hot they are in the middle of August. Mm -hmm. One and one. But those hot streaks get you into postseason. Yes, they do. That's the main thing. Two and one. You know, just think of, you know, in, in mid August in 1987, who were the hot teams? Probably the Tigers, the Blue Jays, mm -hmm. maybe nobody from else from the American League West. Kansas City was playing pretty good baseball yeah. at the end. Okay. Two and one to Alejandro Deaza. Another three ball count. That's by my count four of them. Four three ball counts from Albers in the first 10 plate appearances. Hasn't walked anybody. Came back from a 3 0 count to strike out Dunn. And it was 3 0 to VC8 and he got a ground ball double play. 3 and 1 to Diazza. Moramon to the bag. Fires takes care of it himself. Another ground ball double play. You know, sometimes when you're going good, you fall behind and you throw a cookie right in there. And what does a hitter do? Hits it sharply right to your middle infielder. Well, Diazza had the count in his favor. Looking fastball, the fastball right there. And Diazza right to Florimo, and he steps on the bag himself. He'll complete the second double play for the Twins. Two down, Beckham the batter. Hit a ground ball to Florimo in his first time up. Beckham not in the starting lineup last night because of a tight quadricep muscle. But then Connor Gillespie had to leave with an injury. Beckham went in, got a base hit. Looked no, uh, like he wasn't slowed down at all by the injury and is in the starting lineup again tonight. Two and one. I beg your pardon, one and one. White Sox beating the Twins last night, still seven and a half games behind the Twins. Here's a pop up near first base. Good change up right there. Mauer in foul ground. And another inning where Albers faces just three men and throws 13 pitches in the third.
North is presented by CenturyLink, your link to what's next. By Grand Casino, the best stories start here. And by Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, for the everyday competitor in all of us. Now, some mini foam fingers. Peace to you, too. <laughs> Chris Herman leading off the third for the Twins, and there is ball one. Twins don't have any choice but to have some left-handed batters up there. Bauer they want in there. Herman and Thomas out of necessity. And Sale misses again, 2-0. and Twins looking for their first base runner against Sale. Yeah, Sale making his fifth career start against the Twins, his 13th game. There's a fastball and a strike. And the Twins beat him last year, but oh, excuse me, this year, earlier this year in June, but last year he was three three and zero oh against the Twins. The ball scored at the third. Keppinger fires and Herman retired one away. Bring up Cleve Thomas. Now's a good time, as good a time as any, to get a group together and head down to Target Field. Organize your business, church, school, or maybe a couple dozen of your neighbors. Make a game of it. Visit twinsbaseball.com slash groups or call 833-TWINS. Get a great deal on group tickets today. One down on the third. That'll bring up Cleet Thomas. Over the inside corner, strike one. And in one and one. Another start for Thomas in center field, who's getting the first extended uh, time in the starting lineup in his big league career. With Aaron Hicks being sent down. Wilkin Ramirez is an option, but to this point has not played in center field since coming off the disabled list. One and two. Two and two. Twins have hit 28 home runs over the last 21 games. Most of the major leagues in that period of time. Thomas fouls it back. He's had a four game series in Chicago last weekend. One three of them didn't have to face Sale. But no such luck in this four game series. I said he's a fifth, fifth career start as a starter three and one against the twins with an ERA right around two. Breaking ball got him. Bend it over the inside corner two down. Strikeout number five for sale. He starts that breaking ball right at left handers. That's why it's so he's so tough to hit if you're a left handed hitter. You saw, you know, the Thomas's reaction. He's kind of getting out of the way, and the ball breaks over the middle part of the plate. He brought his knees back, his elbows back, and everything in between to try to get mm -hmm. out of the way of it, and it broke over the inside corner. Floribone takes outside a ball. Way out in front, one and one. You know, talking to Chris Sale, he loves that changeup. That is a big pitch for him. 94 mile an hour fastball. That then he'll pull the string. There's a good fastball at 94. The pitch prior to that, you know, he falls behind in the county. Has enough confidence to throw that changeup over, and Florimon swung through it. Breaking ball, missing inside two and two. 36 pitches for Sale. 24 strikes. Three and two with Dozier yes. hitting next. Take a look at the grip of uh, it's a circle changeup right there. And he said he'll move it out a little bit more if he wants to take more off it, almost toward the end of his fingernails. And Florimo squirts one through the middle. Put the barrel on it, maybe off the end a little bit of spinning, you know, slicing line drive right over the second base. Yeah, just dropped the uh, head of the bat and uh, ball had some slice on it, but the Twins get their first hit. 
Join Fox Sports North at the Minnesota State Fair Thursday through Labor Day. Find us at uh, 1311 Underwood Street, across from the Ballpark Cafe. Register to win tickets to your favorite hometown team. Record a free sports update. Meet the Fox Sports North girls, including the newest member of the team. You can log on to foxsportsnorth.com. Click on the upcoming events banner for complete details. Dozier takes up and away ball one. Now the weather here throughout this homestand has just been perfect. But now as we get close to state fair time, supposed to get hot and humid. Temperatures in the mid 90s, I think, by Thursday. One and oh to Dozier. Toward the hole. Ramirez has no play. And so Dozier gets a base hit. Laura Mull to second. That'll give Maurer a chance. That'll be an infield base hit for Dozier. I mean, Florimo, excuse me, Ramirez really had no play right here. Even if he was able to come up out of that slide, Dozier too quick down that first baseline. And with Florimo with two outs taken off, no force out at second base either. Man at scoring position, and we'll take a look at our cold heart fact tonight brought to you by Frost Brew Coors Light. It has not been a good stat for the Twins, not hitting well overall with runners in scoring position, particularly in August. The Twins best at the plate with the tying run at second. Down low, ball one. Despite that, the Twins have a 9 and 7 mark in August. Mauer struck out swinging in the first, hitting over 400 against the White Sox this year. On the outside corner. And Mauer's 335, third in the big leagues. Imagine where the Twins' average would be without Mauer's 335. Mm -hmm. One and one to Joe Mauer. Breaking ball. He was waiting for it and yeah. fouled it to the screen. Where Thomas reacted by backing away. Joe stayed in there on that breaking ball and he had a great swing, just fouled it straight back. It almost looked like he was waiting on that, like you mentioned. This is where hitters hate to be with sale. Two strikes, and he can strike you out with any of his three pitches. And he struck out Joe first time up on a changeup that went down and in. And he went back to the breaking ball, see if he'd chase it. Threw it off the plate. And Dozier called it a disappearing slider, probably as much as the arm angle as anything else, like Randy Johnson. It comes from a very unique release point because of his height. In his delivery. Mauer fouls it off a leg. Still two and two. Mauer's enjoyed the Twins' power surge. He's hit quite a few home runs here. The Twins, as we said, 28 home runs, 21 games. Here a soft serve single to left would uh, very likely tie the game. Another 2 2 to Bauer. That's pulled foul behind Scotty Eldridge. You know, the outfield really not playing that deep for Joe Mauer. A lot of times you see BC8 right there. A lot of times Joe can drive that ball to the warning track. And even Diaz, even he's shading him to hit that way, not playing very deep. And with sail, like you saw it off the bat at Dome, it just made good contact. That ball's going to jump off the bat. A high drive to deep right center field. That ball is off the very top of the wall. It'll be a two-run double for Mauer. He threw him another breaking ball, and Joe was waiting for that one, too. Yeah, he left it up again. Joe had uh, earlier in the bat had a great swing and a high breaking ball, followed it off. This time, he did not miss it. That ball came within maybe a couple of feet of going out. Joe giving it a ride. Now, that 
that's a pretty good poke up there into that flower bed if he can get over that scoreboard. And it hits high off the scoreboard and then carries back in. So a big two-run double for Joe Maurer, his 34th double of the year. And the Twins take a two-to-one lead. Here's Willingham. Strike one. Twins hitless in the first eight at bats and now three straight hits and a couple of runs. All with two outs. Good to see. One strike to Willingham. Bit hard to center. Heading back is Deaza. That ball is off the wall. Willingham will have an RBI double, and it's three to one. Four straight two out hits against the Chicago Ace. Again, when you're throwing 94, 95, and you catch up to that ball and you put a good swing on it, Willingham went down to get this pitch. Not a bad looking pitch right here from Sale, but Willingham just reached down and his power straight away center over the head of Diazza right into the deepest part of the field at 411. And the Twins take a 3 to 1 lead. For Willingham, his 15th double, driving in his 42nd run. And now Delmet. Well, Looks like it had the corner, but not near Fengley's target ball one. Delmet with a fly ball to right, hit the ball fairly well, and Garcia made the catch out from the warning track. Blasted to center again. Diaz a back to make the catch 405 feet from home plate. A loud bottom of the third inning. A couple of ringing doubles, one by Maurer, one by Willingham, and the Twins take a 3 1 lead. about facing Joe Maurer. What kind of hitter is he, Chris? Not let him hit it. That's tough. That's real tough. Um, you know, obviously, he's, he's one of the best in the game, you know, not only catching, but, but offensively as well. Um, but like, I, I think he's probably got better numbers against left. I mean, he's, he's as good as it gets as far as putting the ball in play, making action happen. You know what's amazing about that at bat with Joe Maurer, he missed that hanging breaking ball as a pitcher. You tell yourself, boy, I can't throw that again. And what does Sale do? He threw it again about three pitches later, and Joe didn't miss that one for the two run double. 
And now Albers pitching with the lead, falling behind Ramirez 2 0. Oh. It'll be Ramirez, Canerco, and Dunn in the Chicago Four. You know, you get mad at yourself out there because you left that breaking ball up. Now, on the other side, Willingham, he hit a pretty good pitch. That ball was down. And you have to almost tip your hat to a guy like Willingham because he went down and drove that ball for the RBI double, followed by what uh, what Maurer is able to do. Two and one. I fly to left field. Willingham back on the track makes the catch. I think another way of putting it, you know, you you can get away with a mistake to an eighth or ninth place hitter, but. You make a mistake to somebody hitting in the middle of a lineup, whether it's the Chicago lineup or the Twins lineup, and uh, they're great hitters hitting in the middle of the lineup for a reason. And Sale got away with the first mistake, the first breaking right. ball, but not the second. Right, right. And you're more upset at yourself for that pitch than you are the one that Willingham hit. Right. One down in the fourth, and Canerco, the batter. Yeah, fly ball out by Ramirez, only the second fly ball out for the White Sox. Six ground ball outs so far. For Albers. And four of them coming on two ground balls. He's gotten a couple of ground ball double plays. Strike one to Conurco. And we'll see whether the White Sox are even more eager to swing at Albers. Although, truth be told, he hasn't had the command. He hasn't had the high strike percentage that we saw in Kansas City and here against Cleveland. He does get ahead of Conurco 0 and 2. Well, again, the first three innings are so important. You've got to find what's working, what's not working. And now from here on out, Elber's trying to adjust to what he's got working. And you know, if you're going to struggle, every inning's not going to be perfect. So it's how you learn from what your mistakes, and hopefully as the game goes on, you get better. Change up in the dirt. One and two. That's a pitch right there that kind of really. It's a pitch that is important to him that off speed pitch because he's not overpowering with the fastball 86 to 88 range but he has to change speeds. Really jam Conurco. That's an 86 mile an hour fastball that got into the kitchen but because of the location maybe it was the change up prior that that set that fastball inside up. Twins tickets remain available and affordable. Still some great baseball here at Target Field. You can check out the steal of the week and demand based pricing for great deals on single game purchases all season long. These and other special deals available every day of the week at twinsbaseball.com slash tickets and by calling 833 twins. Well, I said early on, Dick, there's two different type of left handers here. One hard thrower like Sale, you have to be quick, like Ron Coomer said, get the barrel of the bat out quickly, and then with Albers, what you have to almost do is let that ball get a little bit deeper into the zone so you can hit it up the middle, drive it the other way. One strike to Adam Dunn with two gone on the four. It seems like in through history there have been left-handed pitchers. For some reason there seem to be far more lefties like Albers who don't have overpowering stuff than right-handers. The Twins had right-hander Bob Tewksbury, and he was a finesse guy and couldn't throw it over 85 miles per hour when he was with the Twins. This ball lined over Maurer into the right field corner. Ramirez will play the carom and Dunn has a two out double. But it seems like now having watched Dunn pull the ball the biggest mistake a hitter can make against guys like Albers is to try to pull the ball. You've got to as you say wait for the ball to get a little deeper and try to shoot the ball the other way. Well, this is an 0 2 pitch. You can see right there they tried to go inside but Dunn opened up quickly and hit that ball down into the right field corner. Garcia will hit with Dunn at second and two away. Jamie Moyer comes to mind. Mark Burley who pitched so many great years with the White Sox and Inexperienced hitters would try to pull that stuff he was throwing up there, and you know, one ground ball after short uh, to short after another, and finally you learn. Yeah, we'll see a pitcher tomorrow, Hector Santiago, for the uh, White Sox. Or that's the type of pitcher he is, not overpowering, but hits his spots. John Danks is kind of that way. Yeah, lefties get away with a lot more than righties. Righties sometimes would be afraid to throw some of the the crap that the lefties throw. <laughs> Well, I've tried to be a little more polite than that, but <laughs> why be? One and oh to Avasail Garcia. Tapper to third, but foul. 
one and one. You know, it looks like Albers has struggled a little bit here with his command. His strike percentage is down a little bit, but here he is, maybe on the verge of completing four innings, and he's only going to throw his 55th pitch. Well, he's fallen behind, but he hasn't walked anybody, like you mentioned, Dick. You know, make him put the ball in play. Make the hitter earn his way on. One and one to Garcia. Scalded it to the left field corner. It'll drive in a run. And a couple of very loud doubles for the White Sox. And they get to within one. You know, the Twins had a couple back to back doubles in the uh, bottom of the third by Maurer and Willingham and now with two outs as the Twins did with two outs scoring some runs. Garcia with his fourth double driving in his 14th run. Looks like he delivered the pitch right where Herman wanted it. Yeah, a little bit up a little bit to put the ball hit into that corner. Tying run at second two away for Jeff Kempinger. Twins got their Hits and runs in the bottom of the third after two were out. And now the White Sox making some two out noise. One and oh. Breaking ball over one and one. Maybe just short of a sellout crowd here tonight. I would guess in the neighborhood of 35,000. Yeah, I read there's going to be a lot of walk up today for tonight's ball game. It's one of the beauties of uh, outdoor baseball for anybody who is in downtown Minneapolis today. Weather's gorgeous. If you have some time to kill. Why not come to the ball game? Well, I think the guy out on the mound too has created yeah. a little bit of, you know, interest. Look at the weather conditions. We had those weather conditions for 28 years indoors, and there was no incentive on a night like tonight to go watch a ball game, unless the team was playing really good baseball. Three and one. First base is open, and VC8 on deck. 60th pitch coming up for Albers. Maybe should have bought a cap for the reflection off the skyscrapers outside tire, uh, Target Field. There's strike two. Well, the guy up right now, Kepinger, he doesn't walk much, doesn't strike out much. He'll try to put that ball in play. Missed inside first walk by Albert and three state uh, straight White Sox batters have reached with two out and now VC Ado. Rick Anderson I, this is the first trip to the mound he's had to make in three starts for Andrew Albert a quick trip to the mound by the pitching coach. Pitches so far at this inning for Andrew Albert, Alberts, Elbers. Give it up two earned runs here so far tonight. First two runs allowed of any kind. And he now has an earned run average of 0 0.86. All right, through 102 pitches in his two hit shutout against the Indians last Monday night. The White Sox already have as many hits as he allowed in his first two starts. Here's VC8. That is a ground ball wide of third. Albers gets ahead. VC8 will come back here to the mound and a ground ball double play to wrap up the second inning. Yeah, 21 pitches, most pitches he's thrown in an inning so far at the major league level. 17 was the most he had thrown in an inning. That uh, in the game against Kansas City. Off the plate one and one. Now 
Alvarez has retired nine batters, given up six hits. One and one. High fly to deep left. Willingham back at the wall, and it is gone. A three run home run. And the White Sox proving to Andrew Albers that that third out could be pretty elusive. Yeah, it looked like a breaking ball that just stayed up. And Viciato, uh, who went into a double play to end the second inning, didn't miss this one right here. Home run number 10 on the year. And the first trip for Rick Anderson was not a good one. Take a look at this pitch right here. Slow breaking ball kind of came right into the swing of Tank. And Tank getting the barrel of the bat out. And putting it into the bleachers. Josh Fegley drives it to center. And Thomas back near the bullpen. Makes the catch. Four runs in the fourth. And the White Sox have a 5-3 lead. North is presented by McDonald's. Try the new premium McGrath at McDonald's today. I'm loving it. And by Toyota. Let's go places. To find your nearest Toyota dealer and check out our current offers, visit buyatoyota.com. Pepsi fans of the game. Well, the red team's here. They're sitting out in the sun in the upper deck in left field. Dick Bramer and Bert Blylevin joined by Ron Coomer here as the Twins now are behind by a couple of runs. Wilkin Ramirez takes strike one. The Twins two run lead didn't last very long. Coom and now the uh, White Sox have a two run lead. Stop it over there. <laughs> Pitcher hitter it is. What it is. <laughs> Down and away one and one. Ramirez and Plouffe and Herman. The bat for the Twins in the bottom of the fourth. Swings through the changeup, one and two. Yeah, both clubs. The Twins in the third inning and the uh, White Sox in the fourth. Good two out hitting by both teams. Yeah, you look at the White Sox really trying to attack early in the count, you know, understanding what Albers is trying to do. And, you know, he's made some pitches that. Left up a little bit, and you know, he's fallen behind here yeah. today. Then he that something he didn't do in his first two major league starts. Both of them <laughs> foul to the backstop. Yeah, it's a big difference as Albers showed in his first two starts. He's the type of pitcher that has to pitch ahead in the count, and we saw so many times 0-1-0-2 counts getting the hitter on the defensive. Without question, and, and once the hitter's on the defensive, then you go back and forth with speeds, which he's done an incredible job at. And 
that's how he's you know the success to me is the back and forth of speed that he you know he's, he'll throw 85 86 like we saw him get Canerco out last inning with a fastball and then he can throw 72 71 with slow breaking ball yeah adding and subtracting to the stuff he has two and two to Ramirez and that skips through the middle right past sale and his glove and the twins get a leadoff hitter in the fourth. Ron we're privileged to see Joe Maurer hit night after night and it's a pleasure to watch a great hitter exercise his craft. Boy you're not kidding. But you look at the difference in some swings. Here's the extension on the left out in front from last night the home run. And watch a contact point out in front of his front foot. Typical spot where you'd see most power hitters try to hit. And now this is off sale. We talked about in a pregame show about him trying to let the ball get deep. Sale made a mistake and hung him a breaking ball in his hands. You know, Joe's done a much better job. Six, four, three, a double play. Bluff. It's into a twin killing on the first pitch. Two down. Yeah, but Joe's done a better job at, at getting extension in, in what you talk about extension with your hands is out towards the pitcher. And he's getting that extension and he's been driving the ball and elevating the ball to right field. You know, Ron, I think a lot of players or pitchers want to pitch him in because he knows he hits the ball the other way so well. Right. But, you know, he's such a good hitter that if you do it too many times, he'll make the adjustment very quickly and then start pulling the ball. Yeah, and what we saw in that freeze, freeze shots of, of the contact point of where Joe's hitting the ball. Both of those are out in front and that's that's really where you want to hit. You're going to look at this ball on the left side. It's way out in front of his front foot. That's a great power hitting position in the home run. That's a home run last night. This is the double today and that also out in front. Soft liner caught by Ramirez. The twins are done in the fourth and we go to the fifth with the White Sox up by a pair of runs. Inside the lottery winner's circle with a couple of girls excited to celebrate Ladies Weekend in Minneapolis. They're coming all the way from Minot, North Dakota. They've got a pedicure and twins tickets, some pretty pricey ones. But hey, Bert, they said being circled by you is priceless. So hey, we're going to complete that for you. How does that sound? That's awesome. We're excited. How have you enjoyed Girls Weekend so far? It's, it's been good. It's been great. All right, and now we're going to give you $100 courtesy of the Minnesota Lottery of Scratch-Off tickets, so that'll make it even better. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dick and Bert. Yeah, nice find, Jamie, right there. Maybe those scratch-off tickets will pay for maybe the tickets, maybe they'll get lucky, or maybe even the pedicure. Hey, they're free. Scratch them. Find out what kind of money you make. Strike one to Alejandro Deaza, single and a run scored in the first. 
Then he had a hot two hopper to Florimone, and Florimone turned it into a double play in the third. And now Thomas will try to chase this deep drive to center. And near the edge of the track, hauls it in one down. We'll bring up Gordon Beckham. You can cast your vote on the AT&T Twitter poll. This homestand, we're asking you which current Twins game jersey is your favorite. You can vote via Twitter using the hashtags on the screen. And we'll see what the voting tallies are. Twins wearing the home ivories on Saturday night. Went to the Twins Pro Shop. Just to see some of the All Star merchandise today, and well, they've got uh, all kinds of Twins jerseys there. You could buy all five, I think, if you wanted to. Did you? I did not. Inside, one and one. But plenty of All Star uh, game merchandise. They said they've had to restock the shelves a number of times already on the All Star game uh, memorabilia. Some yeah. people. Here at the ball game with the T-shirts already. Well, this will be the third All-Star game played here in Minnesota. One at the Old Met, one at the Metrodome, and now here at beautiful Target Field. And you can't control these things, but you hope for weather like this. Wouldn't that be wonderful mm -hmm. if we could have a crystal clear night like this? Inside, and another three-ball count to Beckham. Albers really falling behind, trying to almost be a little bit too fine right there. Sixth three ball count, one walk so far. Toward the hole, backhanded by Florimo. Sets and fires two away. Speaking of it, the All Star game and the merchandise attached to it. You can uh, find it at the Majestic Twins Clubhouse store at Target Field, the Twins Pro Shops in Roseville, Apple, Val uh, Apple Valley, and the one I went to in Minnetonka. And online at twinsbaseball.com slash shop. Great gift ideas for the baseball fans in your life. Too early to talk about stocking stuffers, isn't it? And Christmas. Oh, no. Be ready for next year. Here's Ramirez. And, and birthdays. Don't forget birthdays. Well, oh, it's not that I forget them. I just don't make as big a deal about them as you well, do. You, wait, wait, wait. You, a couple of days ago, you had a number two of how many days until your birthday? Yeah. It, it, I but, think you were at 191, and I think I was at, right now I'm at 232, but I think I was like 235 at that time. It's a daily thing for you, though. Oh, yeah. I just, I actually got out the uh, my calendar and counted the days. And I have no idea. It was 190 something the other day when I mm -hmm. tweeted it. Yeah. And then somebody tweeted back that I, that means I've got a half birthday coming. Up. Now, do you celebrate those? No, no. I just go for the full. Fluke gets a nice second hop, fires across to Maurer, and Albers has his first one, two, three inning on ten pitches. And remember, it's April 6th, folks. April 6th.
Gene Bride is here. There's Thomas with a bunt off the plate and then back to the backstop. One strike. By Sale's own admission to you in his interview, he says sometimes he catches himself falling too much toward the third base side of the rubber, so you wonder whether he might not be vulnerable to a bunt. Yeah, you almost have to take that toward, say, Conurco at first base if the left hander does fall off toward that third baseline. I think that's what Thomas wanted to do, kind of take it with him. And he ended up fouling it off. Fastball on the outside corner, 0 and 2. 1 and 2. How did you react to hitters bunting on you? Because there's some pitchers that just almost get mad. Matt Garza got in trouble a couple weeks ago because he. Just didn't handle teams bunting on him very well, and it's part of the game. It's part of the game. That's why I looked at it. Let me see Nolan I've Ryan. Had, if, I, if you, you know, bunted foul on Ryan, the next pitch was going to be at your ear. That was all in, intimidation by Ryan. Ball squirted into left field and nearly checked up when it landed in the outfield grass. A leadoff hit in the fifth for Cleve Thomas. Yeah, it looked like it was right off the end of the bat. And Thomas gets a hit. For the Twins, their sixth hit of the ball game. Here's where I would think Florimone might be bunting, but uh, first another look at the Thomas base hit. A breaking ball right here. Thomas just getting some wood on it and finding a spot in a short left field. Florimone struggled from the right side of the plate all year long. A tough lefty on the mound. We'll see if he bunts here. And nearly pulled double down the left field line. One strike. They got the Twins' first hit with uh, two outs in the third inning. Ball right up the middle. And incredibly, just his, on the right side of the plate, his ninth hit this year. And he takes strike two. Hitting 123 right handed, 242 uh, right handed, yeah. uh, left handed, I should say. Uh, you know what? And he's a natural right handed hitter. So if he's going to be the twin shortstop for the future, you have to let him face left handed pitchers and hopefully get some hits like and that. And two hits tonight from the right side of the plate. One to center, one to the opposite field. I think each of them with two strikes on it. Yeah, Sale left a pitch up right there. Twins get their seventh hit. And something happening here in the bottom of the fifth inning. First two runners on with base hits. Now the top of the lineup. Dozier got an infield hit, grounding one toward the hole on the left side of the infield. And the Twins hit three balls hard in a row. Mauer, Willingham, and Domit. Domit was caught for an out, but a there are big doubles, booming doubles for the Twins. See what the Twins can get done here. First and second, nobody out. Nearly to the backstop, ball one. Situations like this have cost the Twins so many ball games, particularly in the middle months of the season. I mentioned in August, the Twins are nine and seven. If they had just hit to their season average in situations like this, they would have won three, four more ball games. Check this swing. I think home plate umpire Todd Tishner says he went around. Yeah, that was that disappearing slider that uh, Dozier mentioned that broke right into his ankle area. One and one to Dozier. That's pulled between Joe Vavra and the line. One and two. Ryan Dozier has had pretty good success against Chris Sale. Two career home runs. That one coming with two men aboard. Both of them hit here at Target Field. Got a piece. Fagley can't hang on. For Chris Sale is making his 52nd major league start. 29 wins, 22 losses, five complete games, four of them this year. 
one shutout that coming earlier this year against the Angels. A one hit shutout over the Angels in Chicago. Off the plate, two and two. And the Twins have succeeded in running up his pitch count up to 75, even though he's thrown 51 strikes. Yeah, back here in June, he threw 101 pitches in five innings when he allowed the three run home run to Dozier and another run. High fastball, got him. One down. And strikeout number six for Sale, getting Dozier for the second time in the game. One out, Maurer coming to the plate. A reminder that Fox Sports One is now available in all major TV providers. Go to FoxSportsOne.com to find out what channel Fox Sports One will be on in your area. Maurer with a great at bat. He saw two hanging breaking balls. He missed the first and clobbered the second. A two run double that gave the Twins at the time a two to one lead. Willingham followed with another RBI double and the Twins led by a pair. Now down by two the tying run at first one away. One and up. I was facing Joe Maurer I would just uh, you know I'm going to have to play him away pitch him away. That's basically what I would try to do and I try to get him believe it or not I try to get him within three or four pitches. I do not want to go deep in an account against Joe Maurer. He's even a better hitter with two strikes. Breaking ball that flips the corner. You know I'm beginning to wonder and time will tell but I'm beginning to wonder whether we're not seeing Joe in a transition phase. Ron Coomer was up here talking about Mauer hitting the ball out in front a little bit more when we're used to seeing him hitting the ball seemingly on the back edge of home plate rather than the front edge. Well, I think where clubs are pitching him, they try to pitch him inside, but he's not a hitter that's right on top of the plate. That's up the middle. Nice flip. Wow. Beckham to Ramirez and a double play. Wow. Nice turn. Beckham not only took a hit away from Mauer, he turned it into an inning ending double play. To take a hit away and end the uh, bottom of the fifth inning. Free scan brought to you by Frostbrook Coors Light. Well, you see the release point right there by Chris Sale. You know, kind of three quarter sidearm right there. But, you know, if you're a right handed hitter, okay, you can kind of pick up that ball a little easier than, say, a left hander. That's why left handers are hitting just 142 coming into this ball game. Paul Canerco will lead off the sixth for Chicago. On the ground to Florimone. 
One down. Yeah, Beckham, you know, you, I don't know if you work on this in, in batting practice, but sometimes out infielders will work together. But watch Beckham go deep and then able to get something, that ball out of his glove. He almost like turned the glove a little bit, like he knew that ball was going to go right to Ramirez. Great double play turn. Bring up Adam Dunn, called out on strikes, and started what turned into a four run fourth inning with a two out double. Hook one into the right field corner. Didn't think much of it after all. Albers seemed like he'd settled down a little bit and gotten the first couple outs of the fourth inning, but then Garcia double. Keppinger walked VC8 a homer, and suddenly a two run lead was turned into a two run deficit. Down the middle of strike, two of them now to Dunn. Uh, let's see if he can make a better pitch right here than he did in Dunn's last at bat. That was an 0 2 pitch that Dunn hit the double. Breaking ball away. He wasn't going to make that same mistake again. One and two. And through the shift into right field. Another two strike hit for Adam Dunn. Bring up Garcia. Yeah, we've seen the sign from Herman. He uses the middle finger for, I guess, a changeup. Might be a fastball. I'm not sure of the velocity of the last pitch. But we've seen him use that before. Again, you know, sometimes they'll use one as a breaking ball. You know, two can be a fastball. Some some pitchers like to switch it up. Here's Garcia drove a double into the left field corner after Dunn pulled one into the right field corner. Pinky, that's usually a fastball away. Strike that covers the inside. Almost corner. looked like what? A changeup right there. So there are some pitchers that kind of change up on their own as long as it's a fastball and the catcher, you know, can adjust. There's the middle finger. <laughs> Dunn stumbled on his way back to the bag, but he got there. Probably not used to drawing any attention. <laughs> so what are you doing? Okay. Well, he does have one stolen base, been caught once, but uh, he's taking all of about a four foot lead over there toward the hole. Florimo Niffley. And they start a double play. Florimo Niffley and quickly to Dozier. And it's the third double play grounder for Albers on the night.
Mets. Well, it wasn't, hasn't been quite the pitcher's duel many expected here tonight, but it's still been a great matchup on the mound, and that's the subject of tonight's Grand Casino Social Spotlight. We want to know what you think of this pitching matchup between two very good left-handed pitchers, Chris Sale and Andrew Albers. Use the hashtag LeftyDuel, and we will share your thoughts in our post-game show. Dick and Bert. All right, so far it hasn't turned into be uh, much of a pitcher's duel. No, we have seen some double plays, though. Five double plays turned here tonight behind the uh, two left-handers. A slower breaking ball floats over 75 miles per hour, strike one. Willingham, Dolmet, and Ramirez, three, four, and five batters for the Twins. Willingham cracked a double off the center field fence to drive in a run in the third. Swing and a miss, two strikes. That's almost the same pitch that Willingham hit for that double, that fastball down. Sale with no walks in a ball game, six strikeouts, 81 pitches. Missing inside, not by much. One and two. And that's where Fagley wanted it right there, fastball in. If you're going to miss, miss in. Don't want to miss out over the plate. You've seen Sale at 94, that last fastball at 90. There's a changeup. Golf to the left, and it'll hook foul. One and two to Josh Willingham starting the twin sixth. Took a call third strike. That right, throws him right there. That ball started way outside and then came over the plate. Strikeout number seven for sale. Look at the big break on this baby right here. Look where it starts. Somewhere in the middle of the left handed batter's box. <laughs> One down. Here's Ryan Doman. Fly ball to right and then a. 405 foot line drive caught on the warning track by DeAza to end the third inning when the Twins did everything but hit a home run, it seemed, against Sale. 1 0. There it is again, that slow breaking ball in the mid 70s. 1 1. Yeah, Domit to second game since uh, being taken off of the concussion list. Last night's ball game was a designated hitter. One one for four. Ready for the fastball. He spins it foul. One and two. Waiting for the breaking ball. Ramirez from deep in the hole comes up with a fine play, but Doma beats it out. Ramirez ended up in foul ground, his momentum taking him away from first base. A one out single. MLB.tv celebrates 11 years. Catch the rest of this season in HD quality. Watch every out of market game live on more than 350 mobile and connected devices. Visit MLB.tv today. MLB.tv, baseball everywhere. Yeah, the hits are even on the board, but the White Sox have two more runs. For a change, the Twins have been out homered. One to nothing. Here's Wilkin Ramirez. Ramirez nearly had a home run last night. Ended up with a triple. Finished off the triple with a head first slide, and it's one of the things the Twins. We'll watch as Ramirez, who's been uh, dealing with some concussion symptoms. Check swing, 2 0. Suffered a reoccurrence of the injury on a slide in the minor leagues. But with the adrenaline going and everything, went head first for his triple and got there safely. Twins are going to throw over with Dunn at first. The White Sox can throw over with Doman at first. <laughs> Doman 
Dunn's reaction similar to Dunn's. What are you what are you doing? Up and away, three and zero with Blue Fun Dance. Well, Ramirez looking down at Joe Bobber. Do I have the green light? Wilkin Ramirez has only one home run, and that came back in 2009 in his major league debut when he was with the Tigers. He had a home run off of left-handed pitcher Matt Harrison with the Rangers. Three and one, just a second three-ball count for Sale. Three and one. Wilkin Ramirez chops it foul. By Larry DeVito, the groundskeeper, head groundskeeper for the Twins. Bottom of your screen with the cap. Full count to Ramirez. There's DeVito, best in the business. Miss with a breaking ball, the very curve that locked up Willingham for strike three. He missed outside. And now runners at first and second one down. Yeah, first walk for sale. On Cooper to pitching coach. Chris Sale, you know, he'll throw 110, 120 pitches normally in an outing. His most he's thrown 124. Guy that they'll go a little bit longer with. Right now at 94 pitches, trying to get out of the sixth inning. Bluff hitting with two men aboard, two ground balls to short. One of them turned into a double play in the fourth inning. Fastball down the middle, strike one. And let's see that fastball 94 when he was throwing it to Willingham, at least one of them at 90. But away one on one. Yeah, it didn't take Chris Sale very long to get to the big leagues. He was their White Sox number one pick back in 2010. Is signed out of a Florida Gulf Coast University right there in Fort Myers, Florida. What makes his home in that area? Grew up in Lakeland, Florida. Home of the Detroit Tigers spring training site. There's the breaking ball. Snapping off and breaking over the plate. As high as 95, low as 73. And now two and two. And the Twins faced Sale earlier this year. He hit a couple of batters. Never faced fewer than four batters in an inning. And he started tonight with a pair of one, two, three innings. Two and two to Trevor Ploof. Change up. Got him. Two down. That's that pitch right there that Chris Sale has so much confidence in. I asked him about that change up. Change up? So you throw the circle change? Mm -hmm. Just like that. And usually this one's a little bit harder. When I want to slow it down a little bit, I'll just put it a little bit more out in front. And you're thinking fastball, fastball? The whole time. I throw this pitch just as hard as I do. I mean, I put just as much effort and intensity into this pitch as I do any other pitch in, that I throw. Saw right there, his fingers kind of, that, that, you know, ring finger kind of moved up to create that circle change up. And even that one right there just kind of tailed down and away and Poof swung through it. Big Strike out bat. number eight. Big at bat now for Chris Herman, 0 for 2. Takes a fastball, strike one. Twins have had some threats here in the fifth. The inning started with a pair of singles in the sixth. The single and a walk with one out. But surrounding those at bats, a pair of strikeouts. You know, Herman trying to get a hit to the outfield and get the Twins uh, back to within one. Sky to center. 
And Diazza comes in. To end the inning. A threat. But Sale pitches out of it. But still 5-3. So I think everybody anticipated a two to one ball game with the Elbers and Sale on the mound and both of them started off pretty nicely. Getting some strikeouts but uh, now here comes the offense for the Twins three run scored in the third inning thanks to Joe Mowers our two run double followed by Willingham's RBI single but a big four spot put in by the White Sox in the fourth inning highlighted by V.C. Ados. 10th home run of the year, a three run home run. And VC8 will bat second here in the seventh inning. Let's look at both starters, both of them have given up eight hits. The strikeout comparison, but you knew that going in. Sale, a strikeout pitcher, and Albers just making his third career start. He had only four coming in. One strike, Kepinger flipping the first pitch foul. But Albers getting ground ball outs, three double plays, 12 ground ball outs, four fly outs to go with his two strikeouts so far. One and one. Sale at 101 pitches. This will be pitch number 85 for Albers. Two and one. Just hasn't been as sharp as we saw against the White Sox and the Indians. Three and one, a lot of three ball counts. He's had more seven in the ball game tonight than he had yeah. in the first two starts and combined. A lot of them this count right here, three one. That yep. means you have to come in when you don't have overpowering stuff like uh, Chris Sale. Uh, you become a hittable pitcher. Driven to deep right field, heading back is Ramirez, feeling for the wall, making the catch on the track, one away. And that'll bring up Dan Viciato. News from the Kansas City Royals today that Miguel Tejada, who had just been put on the disabled list, now suspended for 105 games for a violation of the PED policy in baseball. Mm -hmm. Tejada had quite an impactful couple of series for the Royals against the Twins. And now he, uh, I would guess, given his checkered past in this. Uh, particular category that we will not see Miguel Tejada in the big leagues again but Bartolo Colon was supposed to start today for the Oakland A's and I thought the same thing last year of him. Well Colon a little bit younger than Tejada. Tejada's 39 <laughs> going to be 40. Keeps himself in great shape but I think there were reasons why you know earlier in his career he uh, won the MVP. His name was uh, you know surrounding around the steroid era and now it's you know, it's the Adderall that uh, 
he had been taking this year and they finally caught him. And the shame of it all for me is the Royals uh, gave this man a chance knowing it was a high risk sign because of his history and the rumors surrounding his uh, major league career bounced foul and uh, Royals have been one of the great stories of the year but that that wonderful vibe that we felt around the Royals is tarnished a little bit because one of their players was uh, using something that was banned and apparently uh, he was he had more than one failed test mm -hmm. or positive test this year right swing and a miss Ciedo strikes out out number two and strikeout number three for Andrew Albers big slow curveball right here. Viciato swinging through it and smiling on the way back. Two down. That'll bring up Fagley, the catcher. Fagley with a single and a fly ball to center. On the field, the Royals fell behind early, tied it up with the Tigers. Jim Leland upset. He got ejected, and immediately the Tigers scored again. They've got a 4 3 lead in the fifth after the Royals swept a doubleheader in Detroit yesterday. Detroit still with a comfortable lead over the Cleveland Indians with six game lead. Josh Reineke warming up. And there's a strike. Twins pack up and leave after the makeup game Monday. Well, most of us will pack up and leave and go to Detroit after the makeup game on Monday. Down low, two and one. Well, we had Ron Coomer up here. He'll be with uh, with you on that road trip. Yes, and I'm looking forward to that. But mm -hmm. he's only going to be on the trip because you're not. No, well, I'm doing less games. It's a foul ball. As much as I would love to be with you, Dick, I'm going home well, to work on my let, golf game. Let, let me try to uh, uh, induce you because okay. travel plans uh, plans can be changed. We have three games in Detroit. Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday afternoon, and then we get on a bus and we drive to Cleveland. Oh, that bus for, ride for about a three-hour bus Let's, ride. Well, I'll be there. And uh, then we've got a, a Friday night game, a Saturday night game, and a day game Sunday in Cleveland. And sure. then you come home and you only televise two of the three Kansas City games. Bouncer left side, Florimone gets around it, charges, flips, nice play, and a nice inning for Andrew Albers. One, two, three, seven. Then you go back on the road again. Flagpole out there, the black one that used to be the flagpole at Met Stadium. You see that, and you think of Jim Tomey hitting it. I think of Jim Tomey hitting it over the flagpole. It was three years ago today. Jim Tomey turned a loss into a win with the most dramatic swing of the bat in this ballpark. 
game against Matt Thornton. It came in the 10th inning. White Sox were leading 6 5, but then Big Jim hit one out in the plaza. And it pretty much was uh, the fulcrum for both teams the rest of the way. The Twins used that home run as a springboard, and the White Sox really never recovered. They were the Twins' closest pursuer for first place in the division. Thomas sharp ground ball nice pick up by Ramirez and a quick first out here in the bottom of the seventh. 102 pitches for sale he's starting the seventh inning here and that's what you want deep into the ball game is some quick outs Diazza goes from center to left and Jordan Danks takes over in center field. So VC out of the ball game. One down in the seventh here's Florimone two hits in two at bats against sale. Showing bunt taking a ball. You have Sale, who by his own admission follows through toward third base, and uh, not the most mobile first baseman in Paul Canerco. And well, you'd think the White Sox would be vulnerable to a bunt pushed along the first base side. Yeah, Kepinger in looking for the possible bunt. And Ramirez gets another chance. Two down. Two quick ones here in the seventh. That'll bring up Dozier. Jim Tomey, by the way, an assistant to the general manager now for the White Sox. He's been under their employ again for about a month, I would guess. Was hoping to see Jim over the weekend last weekend, but don't know if he came by the ballpark or not. Ventura in his second year with the White Sox hasn't had a very smooth ride. White Sox with the next to worst record in the American League. Houston, the only team with a worse record than the White Sox. Astros are winning less than a third of their games. Well, they did that in the National League, so it didn't matter what league they're in. Dozier shows, but takes a strike. I don't know if uh, Elber's night is done as uh, Renicky's warming up, but I'll tell you what, one bad inning, that's been it. I mean, the second, third time around through the lineup, it was awesome. You know, only one hitter got on out being Adam Dunn single. Settled down nicely. Two and one to Brian Dozier. Cracked down the line with foul. For Albers, he threw 97 pitches, 59 strikes. Two and two to Dozier. Whoa! No time was called. Sale was in his windup. And Dozier called time, and Tatishner, the home plate umpire, giving him time. Sale get a chance to work on a new pitch. The old Hoopus Goofus. Now the 2 2. Sweeping breaking ball left up 3 and 2 with Maurer on deck. Going down the line, Dozier will round first. Diazza comes up firing to second offline, and Dozier has a double. I'm not sure what part of his bat made contact, but he kind of pushed it and pulled it at the same time. Yeah, breaking ball stayed up, and he just fought it off and hit it right down that left field line. And with Dozier's speed, he slides safely in the second. Breaking ball kind of flattened out right there. Right off the end, maybe? No? Yeah. Well, I thought he, you know, hit that ball pretty well. So he got the hands through very quickly. Second hit for Dozier in the ball game on his 26 double. And Robin Ventura to the mound. 111 pitches for sale. Nate Jones, a right-hander, might be called in to pitch to the left-hander, Joe Bauer. 
Now just talking to Sale. Yeah, this is just a visit, I think, to see how he's doing right here, going over Joe Mauer. Making uh, Chris Sale chuckle a little bit, whatever he said. Heads back. He just wanted to hear one or two of the magic words from Sale to leave him in the ball game. Like, what are you doing on my mound? Well, get <laughs> off of here. Mauer with a near home run in the third against Sale. High off the scoreboard in deep right center. As it was, it was a two run double. Made another bid for a run scoring hit, but Beckham backhanded the catch on the ground and Flipped it to Ramirez to start a double play. On the outside corner. Yeah, change up right there. Bouncer hit right at Beckham. Seven complete innings for Chris Sale, and he comes off the mound with a two run lead. Twins uh, briefly had a 3 1 lead against them. In the National League, the Dodgers have a 2 0 lead in the bottom of the seventh inning. They're doing it all without Matt Kemp or Stanford Health Injury Report. Balder saying because of the left ankle, Kemp might not return until September. But you wonder whether they might not bring him back sooner if there was more of a race going on in their division. I don't think there's going to be. <laughs> If they win today and Kershaw's on the mound leading 2 0, they would have won 42 out of the last 50 yeah. bowl games. But to, you know, they went into the action today, eight and a half games up in the division. A similar situation in the National League East where the Braves have a 15 and a half game lead. And so the teams who are comfortably in front can, well, they have the luxury at least of letting players heal instead of. Fighting the urge to rush them back onto the field. Century Link linked to what's next, and uh, Josh Renicky on the mound. Uh, he's been outstanding uh, in the second half, 11 and a third innings. Renicky making, not giving up a run, making his uh, 50th relief appearance. He worked here on Thursday night, an inning in the third, only allowed one hit. Twins won that ball game four to three. Strike two. The story in this ball game so far, it's the uh, multi-run innings put on by both clubs. Twins uh, 
had a three to one lead by scoring three runs at the bottom of third but the White Sox came right back thanks to uh, BC Adels three run home run put a four on the board. That got his hand. Piazza hit by a pitch. And he'll take first base. Sounded like it was a glancing blow, but doesn't mean it didn't hurt. Right off the knuckle. Well, for Renicky, he hits his seventh batter of the year. You can see Diaz is a batter right on top of the plate. It's the left hand, his non throwing hand. Middle finger. Apparently. Herm Snyder, the trainer forever for the White Sox out there, fellow Dutchman. Diazza will now trot to first. Lead off man aboard in the eighth. That'll bring up Gordon Beckham. See Diazza tries to do right here. Pretty good speed at first base now. 15 stolen bases. We we're talking about the Braves and how they've got the luxury of trying to fine tune the, their roster health wise and otherwise. Dan Ugler going on the disabled list to get Lasix treatment. He, you know, a lot of power, but a lot of strikeouts, and he's had problems seeing the ball, they say, for the last couple of years. But that's the type of thing you do in the offseason. And now, because they're leading by 15 and a half games, they say, hey, look, let's get the procedure done now, and maybe in Ugler's case, he'll come back and he'll be able to see the ball better come October. Yeah, there's a lot of players that get that done. Just you know, you get cataracts and things like that that uh, kind of block some of the vision. But not during the season. No, but again, you know they are where they're at, and you can afford to uh, to get them healthy for for postseason. Hopped up right field, playable for Ramirez. One on, and before Ramirez stands in. An invitation to tune in Monday for Spotlight, the next generation live coverage of the New Britain Rockcats game against Trenton. We'll highlight the Twins double-A affiliate, which features some of the organization's top prospects like Miguel Sano, Eddie Rosario. Plus, hear from key members of the Twins front office on rising stars within the minor league system. Coverage starts Monday at 5.30 on Fox Sports North. So now, have you had LASIK surgery? I, ha I did, yes, about yeah. oh, seven, eight years ago. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful. Yeah, my wife Gail just had it. And I had cataract surgery. Where I really enjoyed it was uh, for night driving because, you know, that's where my, whatever the vision issue was, where it was uh, really causing problems. Seeing well at night, when you, if you're driving, that's when it's really important to see well. Right. And I had the LASIKs, and that, that took care of it. Good. We've come a long way with that. Ramirez with a double in the first. It was a sun lost fly ball to short center. Thomas froze on it. The ball just lofted up into the sunlight, into the sun itself. And then since then, a fly ball to left and the grounder to third. Another great crowd here tonight. Thirty six thousand eight hundred and thirty three. That's hit to left. Hanging in the air for Willingham. So I think in the homestand the average somewhere in the neighborhood of thirty two thousand a game which is uh, incredible. Given where the twins have been in the standings the last two and a half years if you're looking for something extra special. To take home after a game at Target Field, you can check out the kiosk at the ballpark that has a vast array of game used merchandise from bats to balls to jerseys. All items used in a game at Target Field, you can check it out between gates 29 and 34 out in right field. Next time you're at a ball game, stop by, you might find something you can't do without. 
Two down in the eighth. Here's Canerco. Breaking ball down and away. Just keeping an eye on Diaz at first base. You know, again, pretty good speed, but Renicky pretty quick home. We'll utilize that slide step. Drill to center a base hit. Well, that'll get him to second base. Panerka with his first hit of the ball game. And it'll bring up Dunn. Gardner is going to bring in a lefty. A little more demonstrative with uh, which arm he uses. There's been some confusion this year with the managers going out and just quickly gesturing with one hand, perhaps the wrong hand, and it'll be Caleb Thielbar to pitch to Adam Dunn. By the authority of the Minnesota Twins and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Minnesota Twins LLC. What are you going to miss more when you're taking yet more time off? Uh, Detroit or reading that card? Uh, reading that card. <laughs> Here's Caleb Fieldbar. He came into the ball game here on uh, Thursday night faced only one batter that being Diaz in the seventh inning got him out and then uh, uh, Rick, uh, excuse me uh, Ron Gardenhire brought in Josh Renicky to end the inning. Rick Anderson raving about the one pitch that he threw absolutely tied up Diaz and got a weak little pop up and then the twins made the pitching change got out of the jam and ended up winning the game in the bottom of the ninth it was uh, you know a tight ball game one of those games where one pitch can make all the difference in the world and Thielbar delivered one of those pitches. And a foul off of Herman one strike. Got to like the way that Thielbar has gone about his business out of that bullpen. Kind of one of those Josh Renicky type guys you know kind of going unnoticed but done a very good job very consistent. Thielbar making his 34th appearance. Against a lefty, looks like Dunn's getting down into more of a crouch now, standing more upright. Breaking ball that rolls away from Herman. No chance for anybody to advance. One and one. Field bars worked 31 innings. He's allowed only 12 hits, five runs, only three earned runs on a couple home runs, 11 walks, two intentional, with 28 strikeouts. One and one to Adam Dunn. Nice 
fastball and field bar that time dialing it up to 92 miles per hour. After a couple of breaking balls, you go with that high fastball, and Dunn was a little tardy right there. Left handers hitting only 115 of for Caleb. Foul away. Still one and two. Two straight fastballs at 92 to Adam Dunn. Nice block by Herman that landed three feet in front of the plate. Well, this is a pitch you want something to happen right here. He got, was ahead in the count one and two, tried the breaking ball. And it landed way in front of the plate, Herman knocking it down. Want to go three two. Two and two to Dunn. High to left. Love those sacrifice flies. Willingham's right? lost it. And he can't find oh, no. it. Into the twilight. And one runner will score. It's the second ball lost in the sky. This is, as we pointed out, not just here, but anywhere. When you get twilight, the ball can be lost very easily. They've had a chronic problem in Anaheim this time of the evening, and it's the second time we've uh, seen the twilight in this homestand impact a fly ball. Well, it's just a fly ball right here. You know, Caleb doing his job right here, but Willingham, you see right there, where is it? I have no idea. What can he do? Nothing but finally picks it up and is too late. So Dunn will. Be credited with an RBI double. And Thielbar will come out of the game in the eighth. Result of balls lost by uh, God's uh, perfect creation. The sun on one fly ball in the first, and the twilight sky in the eighth. Casey Fien will try to get the Twins off the field here in the eighth inning. Yeah, Fien has struggled over his last couple outings. One in Chicago where he gave up a couple runs in an inning on home runs. Gave up a couple home runs. One to Dunn, one to uh, Gillespie, and then his last outing last Wednesday, he gave up four runs, three earned. When he gave up that uh, three-run home run to Jason Giambi. So he'd like to have a little more consistent outing here. And now Garcia in a critical at bat for Casey Fien. It's already a three-run lead for the White Sox. Up and in, ball one. Garcia delivered a big 
double scoring the first run for the White Sox in the fourth inning first one that inning and then a couple of bats uh, two at bats later BC Edo hit a three run home run one and one a good cutter right there by Fiend. Probably a good thing for Garcia that he was traded because all the time he was with the Tigers he was compared to Miguel Cabrera which regardless of how good Garcia is going to be would be terribly unfair. Mm -hmm. I agree. Foul back a liner. And I think they got somebody thankfully in the shoulder. Right over the dugout of the twins. Yep. You know, these new stadiums now the fans sit so close. You know, baseball has protected the players with that screen in front of the dugout. And again, right over the dugout. You have to be ready. Sometimes well, you, you can't, can't be it's, ready. You can't be. And it's, no. you know, the sad thing is, and not just here, but everywhere, it, it it's amazing to me it doesn't happen more often to the hitter in the on deck circle. Check swings and you have no chance to react. You're in the case here at Target Field. You're about 30 feet from home plate. Swing and a miss, and Fiend takes care of the eighth. A lost fly ball in the sky for the second time tonight. Lost the twin to run. Bottom of the eighth against the White Sox. As always, we will break this game down after the final out on Twins Live, presented by CenturyLink. We'll take a look at tonight's battle of left-handed pitchers. We had Chris Sale and Andrew Albers, and we'll take a look at both of their outings. Plus, talk about the Twins' powerful third inning. And as always, we'll hear from Ron Gardenhire from the manager's office. Guys? All right, thank you very much, Jamie. EA system here at Tucker Field playing uh, Sweet Home Alabama. That means Josh Willingham will hit against Nate Jones. Yeah, third straight night that Nate Jones has come out of the bullpen in this four game series, making his 54th relief appearance. Worked here on Thursday night, a third of an inning last night, but one inning through 22 pitches last night. He's a strikeout pitcher, 72 strikeouts in 62 innings pitched. And Willingham sharply the other way will go to the warning track to the wall and Willingham has an opposite field double on the first pitch of the eighth. You see Josh get too many in that direction but the twins will take it. They got a fastball from Jones who's a fastball pitcher with the slider. And just takes that fastball the other way and they really had shifted him toward right center. That's where Garcia was, and you can see it. He has to go retrieve that ball. And second double of the ball game for Willingham. 
Hit one to straightaway center, now one to right field. Domit will bat one for three. Domit singled his last time up. Hits are even. Ten apiece. Up and away, ball one. Yeah, Ryan now hitting as a left-handed hitter where he's hitting 238 of his nine home runs from this side of the plate. Front of the breaking pitch, one and one. It's been a while for Dolman to hit a home run. His last home run coming July 13th in New York. Of course, he spent uh, a little over a week on the uh, concussion list. And he didn't have facial hair when he went on that <laughs> list. Driven to deep right center. Danks going back. Oh, a home run, number 10. There you go. For, for Ryan Delman. That was like a call. Back to a one-run ball game. I think we just witnessed the strength of Ryan Doman. That is a poke where he hit that ball. You don't see many hit over the 403 side and over that 29 foot wall. Well, that ball down and away, too, in an uppercut swing. Wow. So it's a one run game. Wilkin Ramirez will hit and he takes ball one. They measure that home run at 429 feet. Not 430, 429. Almost becoming the seventh Twins player with 10 or more home runs. Ramirez has reached twice a single and a walk. There with a 2 0 count. Nobody out here. Bottom of the eighth inning. 3 and 0 with Blue Fondak. And with that home run now, the Twins have hit a home run in 10 straight games. And for Jones, that's the fourth home run he is allowed. Ball four on four pitches. Ramirez draws a walk, and the tying run is on. And Don Cooper to the mound. And this will maybe be the most one-sided conversation Don Cooper's ever had with one pitcher. Well, let me tell you. Sometimes when you when Chris Sale now he had 113 pitches, but when your ace comes out of the ball game, it kind of gives a, a lift to the other team because they don't have to face Chris Sale anymore. Right. Cooper checking as much with uh, Beckham, the second baseman. Well, he spent as much uh, time with eye contact with Beckham as he did with Jones. And Ploof will hit with the tying run aboard. Ploof has bounced to twice, uh, short twice, once for a double play, and then struck out swinging in the sixth. I think the Twins would like to see Ploof get. Getting back to doing what the, he saw Josh Willingham do, and that is use the whole field. Blue squaring a bunt, taking strike one. Yeah, Blue looking down at Joe Bobber again, looking for the sign. Does the bunt stay on? Trevor Blue has one sacrifice on the year, and he has been struggling at the plate. Busted back, and Beckham will have an easy catch one away. Another frustrating at bat for Trevor Plouffe, one away. You know, that's a ball right there that Beckham, I kind of think he looked at, although I let that ball drop because Plouffe didn't really run out of the box right away. He could have maybe let that ball drop, get the force out at first, and then see what Ramirez does, maybe in a rundown. Well, the left handed batters now do up Herman and Thomas. Twins have with a bench of Arcia Morno and Bernier. Field, the left hander warming up, swing and a miss, and Matt Lindstrom, the right hander, swing and a miss by Herman.
One strike. Foul behind Joe Barbara. Gardner Hunter spent some time with the media this afternoon talking about Ramirez and how he's got pretty good speed. That's why they consider him an option in center field. He's pretty athletic. And the Twins would love Herman to get another clutch hit. He's gotten uh, quite a few in his brief tenure with the Twins mm -hmm. and let Ramirez open it up here a little bit. But Herman's up there now with an 0-2 count. Very high. One and two. Basketball clocked at 97 from Nate Jones. One and two. Foul back. It's just an impression you get. With watching, and this is an observation I'm going to make, to not doing the research. But Herman, with a dozen runs batted in, and it seems like they're all big. Mm -hmm. You know, they're all critical in close ball games. Yeah, this is only his 30th game that he's uh, been in, and you're right, 12 runs batted in. They have all seemed to matter. Beckham bobbles at once, twice, steps on the bag, and Herman will reach on a fielder's choice. Beckham nearly got cleaned out at second base by Ramirez. Two away. Boy, he fought that ball right there, that one little one hopper. Maybe tried to get it out back over to Ramirez. Well, hit the heel of his glove and then able to grab it and get the force out at second base. And Ramirez slides in hard. And bobble that ball, able to control it right there, get the force out. Well, you see that and you think of Siyoshi Nishioka in New York and Nick Swisher coming into him and ended up breaking his leg. Uh, Beckham, a very lucky man right there. Here's Thomas. A good hard slide by Ramirez. Had nothing wrong with it, but he, you know, because he bobbled it, he ended up making himself really vulnerable to a, a hard slide. 1 0 to Thomas. Have Glenn Perkins warming up in the event they get a. Big fly here from Thomas. Swing and a miss. One and one. Well, Thomas with four home runs on the year. His last one coming on July 22nd in Anaheim. Mentioned that about Domit, and then next pitch, boom, two run home run. Seen Herman even try a stolen base. One and one to Cleet Thomas. Two and one. The Royals have just tied it up in the top of the seventh. Tigers got a run on the bottom of the seventh. It's 5 4 Detroit. Two and one. Tap to the right side. Easy play for Beckham. The inning ends, but a home run by Ryan Doman after a Josh Willingham double. It's a one run game as we go to the ninth.
by Josh Willingham, and then the Twins came back with two, so it's a one run game going to the ninth inning. And our final uh, look uh, tonight at the ATT Twitter poll, and again, the home Ivories uh, with an overwhelming lead in the ATT Twitter poll, and we have one more day to vote on this. And then we'll pick something else when most of us are in Detroit. Jeff Keppinger will lead off the ninth inning. Casey Fiend. Yeah, Casey Fiend came in the eighth inning, ended up striking out Garcia to end the eighth inning. His job put a zero on the board right here. Get the twins back in there, maybe uh, tie the game or win it in the bottom of the ninth. Chipped his bat and a bouncer to Ploof. DC Ado with a three run home run to left in the fourth. Yeah, Jordan Danks yep. uh, took over for VC Ado. He moves in center, then Diazza went to yep, left, yep, but yep. Danks in his first at bat. And a belt high strike. Start the bottom of the ninth with Pedro Florimon, but they have Arcia and Morno on the bench along with Doug Bernier. So I would guess uh, one or the other, Arcia or Morno, will be pinch hitting. And that Arcia is up on the railing, might suggest it'll be Morno. Rifle shot to center field. And Danks is aboard with a one out single. Met Stadium days, somebody was going to pinch hit and they might grab a bat in the dugout and swing it a little bit, but all the new ballparks are batting cages behind the dugout and somebody who can might be used as a pinch hitter. They go in and take some cuts, might even have somebody pitching live a BP to them, get them warmed up a little bit. Yeah, they also have the tee that they can sit back there and just, uh, you know, even though. Uh, Arcia is kind of leaning on a railing. He may have been down there the last couple of innings getting ready. Herman with a catch ball one. Well, that was one thing uh, last year as Justin was preparing for increased duty as a designated hitter. He said, well, you have to get used to it, but he learned some things about DHing from Jim Tomey about how to stay loose and stay involved with the game and things you can do even when you're not playing a position. Well, he may be doing some of that right now. Want to know. Yeah, well, and what's so nice too down there in that batting cage, they have TV monitors, so you can also stay in the game. You know, some of these, like at the old, you know, at the at the, the Metrodome, the batting cage was out in right field. <laughs> About a five-minute walk from yeah. the clubhouse. One and zero oh to Fegley. Mauer is going to be a tough catch, and it'll be Dozier who drops it in foul territory. Mauer getting twisted around after holding the runner, and Dozier had a clean shot at it, but a ball, uh, the ball bounced out of his glove. Yeah, hopefully Dozier's all right right there. He kind of landed it on, on, landed on that left shoulder. Kind of feeling the collarbone area. No play rule. He kind of jammed his shoulder into the ground right here. All trickled out of the glove right Ooh. there. Yeah. Well, the same thing Floromone did on the fly ball lost uh, in the sun in center field in the first inning. One and one. To Fegley. Well, Casey Fien, who typically is out there on the mound with 110 percent of the normal amount of adrenaline anyway, probably the drop pop up now has him jacked up to about 120 <laughs> percent adrenaline. Nasty breaking ball gets a swinging strike too. Don't 
fouled away. They let that breaking ball up right there. Fiend with 58 strikeouts in 50 innings pitch. Credits that little cutter for really, uh, you know, kind of revamping his career. Going on the dugout. Getting loose for a possible pinch hitting appearance. Two. two and two. It fouled away. Danks took off. Yeah, Danks looked in, might have a little little hit and run or something, but Danks pretty good speed. Robin Ventura relaying signs to Joe McEwen over at third base. Difference in the game right now is the run the White Sox got in the eighth inning after a hit batter. Canerco single, Dunn hit a Fly ball to left that was lost by Josh Willingham in the twilight. Well, you could almost go back to the first inning on uh, Ramirez's yeah. fly ball to center. Routine fly ball lost in the sun. Two and two to Fegley. And check of Danks. Danks has four stolen bases in five attempts. Be an important part of the White Sox rebuilding effort because from what we've seen, Diaz in center, Viciedo in left defense is not their strength. They're going to need to hit to uh, be regular players, and Banks is going to get a lot of time as a defensive replacement. He takes off again. This ball drilled to right. And Ramirez backpedaling to the track makes the catch. Out number two. Well hit ball for the second out of the inning. Fegley has hit a couple balls to the warning track here. In the uh, third, fourth inning, he hit one to straightaway center to the warning track, and right there, another long fly ball out. Diaz has scored a couple of runs. He was hitting the knuckles by a pitch in the eighth inning. Josh Rennick clipped him, and then it was Diaz who scored on the lost fly ball toward the left field corner. Foul back one strike. Again, flush back to the bag. Fiends a four run inning that he allowed against the Indians earlier in this homestand in the eighth inning spiked his ERA up to 344. Popped up. Loof will chase it. But it keeps drifting and is back in the seats. Yeah, it's not only the three earned runs he gave up on the Giambi three run home run, it's the start prior or the relief appearance prior to that, too. He gave up two earned runs. If you're a reliever, you give up, you know, five earned runs in an inning and a third. Boy, that jacks that ERA. Mm -hmm. I mean, Casey Fiend has pitched outstanding. He's just, those are two back to back ugly outings. Two strikes to Deaza. Fiend trying to pitch the Twins off the field in the top of the ninth. One and two. And the Twins bullpen, they, they, they have been outstanding all season long. Only the Kansas City Royals and the Oakland A's have a lower combined earned run average out of their bullpens.
One and two. Just outside two and two. Well, the Twins have you, know, you hear so much about Sano and Buxton, Rosario, and some of people like that, but they've got some relievers in Rochester that should be in position to help the team again next year. Michael Tonkin, uh, Tonkin came up briefly and pitched well. Pitched well. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I, yeah, relievers. Twins need starters. Yeah, <laughs> no. <laughs> Thanks goes, and it's ball three in the throw. Knocked down by Florimo. At least I think it hit Florimo's glove and not Danks. A stolen base and now a full count to Deaza. Yeah, Danks finally uh, able to steal second base. Tried it a couple times with Bagley up, but right here slides in safely. His fifth stolen base in six attempts. So it was 0 2, now it's 3 and 2. Big runner to Strand at second base. Danks is there. Diaz at the plate. I fly to deep right field. This ball is tagged, and it is gone. A great at bat for Diaz, and the lead is back to three. And Casey Fiend continues to give up some key runs in the eighth inning. Well, that's uh, three outings in a row now that he's allowed a home run or more. Diazza hitting his 14th home run of the year as a leadoff hitter for the White Sox. Came into this year with 13 career home runs. Breaking ball. And Diazza just hitting it into the right field bleachers. And it's an 8 to 5 game. Again, a great at bat. He was behind 0 and 2. Fouled some pitches off. And took three to fill the count off the plate. Ball one. Now it's maybe a situation similar to what Jared Burton went through. You know, Burton with a great hard changeup that he has, but in retrospect, the Twins feel fly ball to right field that he kind of fell in love with it and paid the price. And now maybe Fiend going through the same thing with his cut fastball. Justin Morneau will pinch hit, but in a three run game. And as we expected, he'll hit against the Chicago closer, Addison Reed. Addison Reed picked up his 29th save in last night's White Sox victory over the Twins, making his 52nd relief appearance. 55 strikeouts and 55 and a third innings pitch. He's allowed 45 hits, only three home runs. Morneau will 
a hit for Florimone, who'd gone two for three. But if you have an asset on the bench like Morneau, you would want to use him regardless of the score. Reed will face Morneau, Dozier, and Maurer. Which need to send uh, quite a few more to the plate, obviously. Yeah, Justin has a pinch hitter, 0 for 2. And he faced Addison Reed in last night's ball game, made the final out with a fly ball to center field. And of course it changes everything. The White Sox are in conventional defense. They're not in a no doubles defense because it's a three run lead rather than a one run lead. One and oh to Morno. Popped up left field. Diazza coming in. Ramirez out and it's Diazza. Catch one away. Bring up Dozier, who has a pair of hits, a couple of strikeouts as well, but a single and a run scored in the third, and a double in the seventh. Now Reed faced four batters last night through 22 pitches. The only damage off of them was an infield base hit by Joe Mauer. Down and in ball one. Boy, those Royals are something else. They just tied it up in the eighth against Detroit. They will not go away. <laughs> Good for Kansas City. It is. Popped up to right center. Retreating is Garcia. Two down. And that'll bring up Mauer. Well, Reed last year put into that closer role, saved 29 games for the White Sox when they won 85 ball games. Save here tonight would be his 30th this year. Mauer one for four. He nearly hit a three-run home run in the third inning. It went high off the scoreboard in right center for a two-run double. Strikeout before that, a couple of ground balls to second after that. Strike one. Unless the Twins can uh, dramatically turn this game around, it will be a losing homestand for them. They lost two of three to the Indians to start the homestand. I, beg to, I take that back. I keep forgetting about the makeup game on Monday. Mm -hmm. the Twins could win yet tomorrow and Monday and finish with a 500 homestand. A miss 0 and 2. The ball slowly rolling to the backstop. Yeah, that's a slider from Reed. Basically, fastball, good fastball, slider, and a changeup. Last year's rookie season. Twins down to their last strike. That was it. The White Sox win back to back games against the Twins. They finally saw Andrew Albers. And I don't know that anybody thought 13 runs were going to be. No, I'm just going to say that with Albers and Sale going at each other, the way that both of them have been pitching, you'd think it would be a two to one ball game. Instead, it's an eight to five White Sox win. And the Twins will hope for a split of the series uh, tomorrow afternoon, Anthony. Suddenly the White Sox have swung this series in their favor with consecutive wins. We'll look at this battle of left-handers. Look at how the Twins extended their home run streak. And hear from Garney next on Twins Live. <laughs> 